Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now at 5 a.m., it was supposed to be a fun 4th of July on the beach at South Padre Island. Instead, it ended up playing out like a nightmare. Four beachgoers attacked by a shark. This, this video is from Texas DPS showing that shark. The news has caused a lot of conversation on social media, and we want to hear from you. We have a poll going. You can see it at the bottom of your screen. And here's a question. If you had plans to go to the Texas Coast Bend this weekend, does this make you think twice about your beach trip? You can vote now by going to ksat.com slash poll, or you can scan the QR code on your screen now or share some of your comments throughout the show. Good morning, and we're going to revisit that poll throughout the morning. It's Friday, July 5th. I hope everyone had a good 4th of July. Patty, how, I know we've been talking about this shark attack. Um, what, how do you feel? Well, we actually have a beach trip planned, and Ooh. I'm really, well, not this weekend, but soon. To and the, I'm, to the to, to South to the, Padre? To, to South Padre, yeah. Oh, wow. And so I'm really thinking about it, watching what's going on with mm -hmm. that, because I have little kids. And, of course. You know, you have to talk to them about this is you know, the shark live here. Yeah, that, we have to remember that. They live here. I'm from the coast. I've seen sharks my entire life. Um, I don't know, but I just, be, everyone be safe out there. And Justin, um, you know, I was on vacation in Colorado and now yeah. I'm back and yeah. I was used to the cooler temps and man, the humidity. It's thick. <laughs> oh. And I'll tell you this, if uh, if, the sh if the sharks, you know, make you a little nervous, uh, really the, the weather should too, if you're going down to the coast this week and really anywhere along the Texas coast as we've been talking about, because as barrel moves into the Gulf of Mexico, you're going to see higher waves and surf. So that should play into your plans too, if you uh, are headed to the coast this weekend. So let's check in on barrel. Right now, winds are 110 miles per hour. This is the storm that uh, really has kind of defied the odds, quite honestly. We really thought it would be weaker by now. It does look weaker with the satellite signature, but at the moment, still carrying 110 mile per hour winds category two, and it's moving west northwest at 15 miles per hour. Honestly, it's probably making landfall as we speak. So this is Cozumel right there, the island of Cozumel. There's Cancun. So just south of Cancun, it will cross over the Yucatan. But it's a little further north than we thought it would be. It's going to cross less amount of land. So that may not uh, weaken it as much as we thought. So that's one factor that plays into uh, what has changed with the forecast. And there are some changes. I'm going to show you the spaghetti plots. And because it's a little further north, now some of the models want to take this and turn it north and northeast quicker uh, than we thought it would, uh, or at least uh, compared to the last several model runs. And what that does is it's going to set up a scenario, unfortunately, where if you're out to the west, you may not get very much rain at all. And if you're east of this system, you could get a ton of rain. San Antonio may be right on that dividing line. So this is something we're going to watch. It, the, the track is going to be so very important on how much rain we get. And it's going to be very important on how much this thing strengthens and how it affects the southern Texas coast as well. So these are all things we're watching. Uh, we do still have some good rain chances, I think, Monday and Tuesday. But again, it's going to hinge on that exact track. And we're going to get more clarity throughout the day once this gets back out in the Gulf. Uh, and we'll certainly keep you updated with uh, uh, online content and obviously on air too. Okay, let's talk traffic now and head over to uh, RJ. It's a quiet morning, I'm guessing. Yes, uh, definitely a quiet morning this morning, Justin. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that shark video came out, which is incredible video there from the DPS chopper. I mean, something that you rarely see that angle. I had a friend, y'all, that uh, usually goes down to SPI for 4th of July weekend, but because of uh, barrel and because of uh, what they kind of anticipated there, he was like, you know what, I'm going to go up north to the Austin area. So, uh, yeah, we were texting back and forth. Uh, those those are some um, really, really kind of crazy images and video coming out of that area as we take a look at our traffic right now. And yeah, kind of the same situation as yesterday. Not seeing too many people on the roads right now. Kind of maybe thought that uh, maybe some people might get back to work, but I wouldn't blame y'all if uh, you just decided to take a four day weekend while we were at it. Uh, as we take a look at 37 at Houston, traffic moved along pretty smooth both directions there. Let's go ahead and check in with Alex Gomez. He is on the roads for us once again this morning in drive cam. Alex, how are things uh, looking out there, my man? 
RJ, good morning. It's looking pretty good right now. It's kind of clear over here on the northwest side. This is going to be I-10 West near Crossroads. And you're right, I agree with you. You know what? A lot of drivers might even take today off. So just to have that long weekend. So I'm curious to see how it's going to play out this morning. But of course, if there's any slowdowns, you'll be the first to know, RJ. All right, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, the only thing that TechSot's reporting right now is uh, that uh, construction that is taking place I-10 West at Frio, but based on our trans guide camera, it looks like we're still seeing traffic move through that area right there. So we will continue to monitor this, and if there's any updates or anything else that happens or pops up on the roads, we will let you guys know. Uh, Patty, Sarah, back to you guys. Thanks, RJ. Happening tonight, a programming reminder, President Joe Biden sits down with ABC News George Stephanopoulos for his first interview since the first presidential debate. You can watch the ABC News exclusive interview at 7 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. And speaking of the race for the White House, President Biden faces more headwinds on the campaign trail with persisting questions about his ability to serve as commander in chief over the next four years. ABC's Christiane Cordero reports so far Three Democratic members of Congress and some donors have called on the president to back out of the race following his performance in last week's debate. He stood on a White House balcony above a 4th of July crowd. For President Joe Biden these days, every move is a bid to show he belongs on top of the Democratic ticket. Three Democratic congressmen, Lloyd Doggett, Raul Grijalva, and Seth Moulton, have called for Biden to drop out of the race after last week's debate performance. Others are criticizing the Biden campaign's response, urging a change in strategy. We needed a boost from Thursday. We didn't get it. And the campaign has been very, I think, arrogant in their response. We need a reset. We need a course correction. We've got to acknowledge that uh, this was not just one bad night. The White House has repeatedly dismissed last week's debate as a bad night, first saying the president had not received any medical exams in the days after, then acknowledging he was seen by a doctor as he was recovering from a cold. During a meeting with Democratic governors, sources tell ABC News Biden said he needs to get more sleep and work fewer hours, suggesting he shouldn't schedule anything after 8 p.m. While campaigning for the Biden-Harris ticket in Michigan, California Governor Gavin Newsom, whose name has been mentioned as a possible replacement should Biden step aside, Wait in. I didn't, it wasn't a literal eight, eight o'clock. I will be doing things differently. It was more figurative. Former President Trump spent the holiday speaking with veterans and attacked Biden, posting on Truth Social, happy 4th of July to all, including to our highly incapable president. He then mocked Biden's debate performance, Vice President Kamala Harris, and Special Prosecutor Jack Smith. President Biden visits several key battleground states this weekend to show voters he's still up for the job. Biden and Trump have one more scheduled debate in September, hosted by ABC News. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Trending now, we want to get back to that poll that we have going on right now. You can see it at the bottom of your screen there. If you had plans to go to the Texas Coastal Bend this weekend, does this make you think twice about your beach trip? You can vote right now by going to ksat.com slash poll, or you can scan that QR code right there on your screen. Okay, so here are the results so far. 61% said yes. We will rethink that and no at 39%. Now, as we said, this comes as four beachgoers were attacked by sharks yesterday. Uh, a shark, I should say, on South Padre Island. Here's some newly released aerial video from the Texas DPS showing that shark. You can see it right there swimming through the water. All four people were likely attacked by the same shark. That is according to the Texas Game Warden Captain. So South Padre Island police say this all started around 11 o'clock yesterday morning. Police officers and fire crews treated the victims. Since this morning, we know one man had a severe bite to the leg. At least one other person was bitten. One was grazed and another was injured while trying to fend off the shark. As for the shark, the game warden captain says it escaped back into open water. Right now, there are no plans to try to catch it. Of course, he lives there. Lots of people are talking about this on social media. Here are some of the comments from Facebook. Brenda Walton wrote on Facebook, no, def go to the beach. Definitely not uh, go to the beach. Love the sounds of the waves. So peaceful. Would I get in that? That's a big no. And taking another look at the poll we have going this morning. Here are the latest numbers. Again, 61% say yes. It would change my plans, 39%. No, we can keep you posted throughout the morning. All right, time right now, 509, 79 degrees out there. 
So the fourth may be over, but the holiday sales, they're just starting. Just ahead, what you need to know if you're heading to the store today. All right, taking a live look outside with live cam. A peaceful morning out there, not a lot of traffic. Look at how those cars, I wonder where they're going. They're for being forced to work on this fifth, not taking a, a long weekend like uh, some of us. Not us, Sarah, not us. We're <laughs> not here. Us. We're, We're going to have a look at the forecast coming up in just a In this morning's GMA First Look, a preview of the holiday deals that'll have you celebrating all weekend long. Big savings on appliances and homeware, and be sure to stock up on your summer favorites. Some of the best deals right now for 4th of July are on your seasonal items. Think patio furniture, grills, and summer clothing. And a new trend, financing deals. Many retailers offering 0% financing on big ticket items like cars and mattresses. That actually could be a big way to save because now you don't have to worry about paying interest if you put it on a credit card, and that can help you save paying it off over the course of a year or more. And coming up at 7 a.m., a look into more deals and what items you may need to hold out on to get greater savings down the road. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. 513, 514 now, 79 degrees on this Friday so far. We're going to take a look out with Drive Cam. That's Alex Gomez. He is on the roads for us. Not a lot of people on the roads this early morning after 4th of July. Hey, if you guys see him out and about, give him a friendly honk. Got like a little beep beep. Let him know, hey. <laughs> Not hey. a mean honk. Yeah, He's a mean good driver. Honk. A friendly honk. <laughs> Let him know. We love what you're doing out there. We're going to have a look at the roads when we come back. When we started Blue Buffalo, we made a promise to our boy Blue that we would create the best pet food we possibly could, made with the finest natural ingredients and none of the things you find in many other pet foods. We call it the True Blue Promise, and it's our commitment to feed your pet just like we would feed Blue. It's what makes Blue Buffalo unlike other pet food companies, which have many different brands with different standards. We have one standard, the one inspired by our boy Blue for the well-being of your dog or cat. Because like you, we love them like family too. Biflex. Taken every day, it's clinically shown to improve joint comfort in seven days with significant improvement over time. Sis, I'm turning into a mom. Ah, the sweater vest. No, my super soft skin. See, Jergens Original Cherry Almond Lotion. Mm, smooth. Mom will be so proud. I feel like one big baby butt. And try Shea plus Cocoa Butter Moisturizer. Mm. Jergens. In today's Tech Bites, good numbers for Samsung thanks to AI. The company's shares are at their highest price in three years. Second quarter profits jumped nearly 1,500% over last year. Financial experts credit a major jump in the demand for AI. Next, new life for your old 80s mixtapes. Fio has announced a new portable cassette player. The CP13 can run for 13 hours of battery life once fully charged. It also has an all-analog circuit to reproduce that old-school cassette sound. And finally, Nike is discontinuing its line of self-lacing sneakers inspired by Back to the Future. And the app that controls the $350 shoes is going away too. Without the app, owners can still use the physical buttons on the sneakers to power them on and loosen the laces, but they would no longer be able to adjust the lighting. I guess they couldn't tie it all together. I guess you could say it was not working out. Those are your tech bites. Cute. <laughs> there like some uh, Marty McFly, like Back to the Future type of deals there. The automatic shoelaces. Remember like in Back to the Future oh, 2 when his shoes just yeah. automatically okay, tied themselves. Okay, do you guys remember in the 90s when they had those like curly shoelaces? <laughs> yeah. They're back now, aren't they? I don't know, but I, I thought, thought they, they were, were cool and then... And then I was told they you weren't You should bring cool, them back. But my mom made me use them because mm. I couldn't tie my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Real cool. The truth comes out. Yes, it goes automatically. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, yeah, traffic here. Things looking pretty good out there if you're about to step outside. And uh, you know what? Uh, again, I would not blame everybody if they just decided to go ahead and take Friday off after probably a late Thursday night. I know I was hearing uh, some fireworks popping off uh, closer to around midnight and even some uh, early morning hours this morning in the uh, Southtown area. But uh, as we take a look here, 35 Space Center traffic moving along pretty good there. 37 Houston, same situation there as well. Let's go ahead and check back in with photojournalist Alex Gomez. Uh, Alex, happy Friday, my man. How was your uh, 4th of July celebrations? Were you out and about? How are things looking out there? 
Well, happy Friday, RJ. It was great yesterday. You know what? I went to my parents' house, had some good barbecue, and shout out to them. Uh, I love them. They they make some good food, RJ. I hope you had a good one, too. And the, the roads are good right now. Check out 1604 eastbound right at Gold Canyon. You know what? Driving conditions have been great all week. We've had dry roads, good weather, but I'm listening to uh, Justin's forecast. Next week, the commute could be a, a completely different story, RJ. That is right. We will definitely enjoy it while we can. And speaking of 1604, just a quick reminder, there will be no construction going on out there. 1604 I-10 at the interchange there for the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. So good news if you're going to be out in the La Cantera or the Rim area. Justin, so that's good news, man. I mean, no, we ain't got no beams, bro. No beams. <laughs> no I, beams, bro. Well, they're still putting those beams. I mean, I see them. They're ready to go up, but uh, yeah, no beams. Uh, anyway, let's talk about barrel. Uh, right now, winds are at 110 miles per hour. It's category two storm. This is the 4 a.m. update, and uh, we'll get our next update around seven o'clock this morning. So at that point, it will have moved on land. I think it's probably making landfall as we speak. Uh, it looks a little asymmetrical. It's taking on some shear. So this should continue to weaken further, although it's kind of defied the odds a little bit, staying fairly strong as it's making landfall this morning. Moves across the Yucatan. Now, its exact direction is going to be important here. If it uh, just cuts across a little bit of the Yucatan, reemerges at that point, uh, it, it wouldn't weaken it all that much. But if it goes across more land, goes in this direction, uh, you may see a weaker storm. So these are all things that are important uh, when it comes to uh, how this evolves. It's moving west northwest at about 15 miles per hour. And as we look at the spaghetti plots, these are the computer models, and these are going to be really important. Uh, and they've had a bit of a shift this morning. So that's, uh, that's what we're noticing is that it's shifting a little bit to the east uh, because I think the storm's a little bit further north than what the models originally anticipated. So if that happens, if it's more of a, a curve like this, then that's going to create a situation in which there's not much rainfall out west and there's a lot of rainfall to the east. The speed of this thing is also going to be important, too. So these are kind of the changes this morning. We've been talking about the fact that these, these things shift. That's how this works. Uh, these, uh, these computer models kind of jump back and forth. Well, let's look at the official track here, and this is from the Hurricane Center. And because they're seeing what I'm seeing, they've adjusted the track a little bit, which makes sense. So this becomes a tropical storm as we get into tomorrow. Stays a tropical storm, depending on... Uh, you know, where it stands uh, with its organization. And then by the time we get into, say, early Monday morning and probably Sunday night into very early Monday morning, this regenerates into a Category 1 hurricane. Now, if it starts to take that turn and just sort of rides up the coast, it would have time to strengthen further. Places like Corpus Christi would need to keep a very, very close eye on this. If it makes landfall and goes in this direction, then uh, you would start the weakening process. So again, these minor details can play a big role in how this unfolds. Uh, then as it goes north, uh, the question will be, what are the impacts here in San Antonio? It will have weakened quite a bit at this point, but we still could see some direct effects before this really weakens and gets absorbed uh, and pulled north. First things first, we got to talk about what's going to go on tomorrow because we do have a chance of rain on your Saturday, and it's not really associated with the tropical weather. Uh, it's going to be a weak frontal boundary that's going to kick off some showers and storms, mainly north of Highway 90 and Interstate 10, so the hill country, maybe as far south as San Antonio tomorrow evening. Keep that in mind, about a 30% chance of rain. That will dissipate, front will dissipate, and then we turn our attention to barrel. Uh, again, potentially making landfall Sunday night into very early Monday morning. Uh, then as this moves north, and this is one computer model we're looking at as far as rainfall. Uh, this is Monday morning. Uh, it takes a lot of the really heavy rain east of I-35 because of this new kind of turn to the north. And notice it doesn't produce much rainfall out west. So that's the, that's the kind of change. I know it's a bummer for folks uh, west of I-35. But know that, again, this can change. Here is the latest thinking. You'll get the highest totals east of I-35, lowest totals west uh, out towards say Kerrville, Del Rio, Eagle Pass. Uh, that's the kind of the latest thinking. Rain chances will be highest Monday and Tuesday to account for that tropical moisture moving through and then we'll drop rain chances off Wednesday and Thursday. Very quickly outside right now 79 in San Antonio, 77 in New Braunfels. Our forecast today takes us up to 99 with uh, heat index probably somewhere around 100 
a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, 96 Saturday, 95 Sunday, we'll drop it into the 80s. Monday and Tuesday with that tropical moisture around and those uh, decent chances for rain. And coming up at 1 o'clock today, me and Montgomery and myself are going to be doing a broadcast live on the weather app and also here on air uh, talking about the potential track. We appreciate that. I know you guys have been very busy tracking barrel. Yes. Looking forward to all those updates. Thank you, yep. Justin. Mm -hmm. Time right now, 525, 79 degrees out there. We'll be right back. Well, in case you missed it, we want to share some of the sights and sounds from last night. These are some of the 4th of July celebrations in and around San Antonio. Take a look. We have thousands of people lined up here. Uh, there's close to maybe 7,000 uh, individuals uh, just enjoying the festivities. And then we'll probably have about 15,000 in the park uh, to see the fireworks display. Celebrate freedom, celebrate America, celebrate everybody who fought for us in order to be able to be here and be free. It is to honor America on her birthday and to pay tribute to all of the men and women and, and their families who have sacrificed so much for this country for 248 years now. Thank you for your service to this country and for all you've done and for all you still do. Always all day long, stay here in the hot burning sun just to enjoy <laughs> 30 minutes worth of fireworks. I actually am, love fireworks. <laughs> this half hour we look at some of the awesome fireworks from last night just look at them beautiful these were posted on our ksat connect page if you can share your videos there too you can check it all out on ksat.com all right welcome back it is 5 30 on july 5th friday Yay, we made it. We made it. Did y'all hear fireworks last night? Oh, yeah. Up until south town. Uh, midnight, south downtown area. Yeah, they were yeah. popping them off. They there. were so, definitely yeah. popping them Some on the street. Some loud booms are on 2 in the morning. Uh, yeah, people were having themselves a good I time. I didn't hear a thing I last didn't either. Night. I slept right I through think it. I, oh, I we're jealous. Really good. <laughs> we're jealous. Or we live in a different neighborhood. Well, I yeah. did hear my dog bark a couple of times. Uh, it probably was what it was. My dogs were Maybe it was somebody scared. breaking in and you didn't know. Could have been that, too. You ignored it either way. I was in pretty good sleep. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at uh, something overnight, guys. We, we talked about the KSAC Connect pictures with the fireworks, but look at this. This is a grass fire that was off of 583 near Foster Road. You know, this is kind of uh, the thing you have to worry about with the fireworks. I know it's kind of jumping around there, but you can see off in the distance uh, there was a grass fire that I think uh, has been extinguished, uh, but we got to be so very careful. Things are still dry around here, and we certainly uh, could use some rain too. Are we going to get any and how much will we get? That's still a question. I know, I know you're probably at home and you're saying, man, we've been watching this thing for five days. When are we going to have some answers on what it means for us? And as I said last half hour, it, uh, there's so many small uh, things that could play a big role in how much rain we get and what effects we have. Uh, but we have brought rain chances up Monday and Tuesday. Right now, 79. We've got cloudy skies out there. 77 in New Braunfels, 78 Converse, 77 in Bernie and Kerrville. And our forecast today, noontime, 90, mostly sunny. And uh, stop me if you've heard this forecast before. 99 with a feels like heat index of 103. Basically a carbon copy, what we've seen the last couple of days. Here's the good news. Finally, some changes tomorrow. We've got some rain back in the forecast. And of course, early next week, some potentially major changes depending on what goes on with barrel. We're going to take another look at that forecast for you in just a couple of minutes, but we go over to RJ now. And has anything changed? Uh, actually, no, Justin, things are still looking pretty good. If you're about to step outside right now, uh, I did see some flashing lights over here. 35 Space Center over in the northeast side, uh, kind of east side, northeast side of town. Looks like it's just a construction vehicle here. I don't anticipate any uh, major issues when it comes to some of the construction that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. It seems like uh, they went ahead and gave those crews a couple of days off for the 4th of July holiday. So uh, we will continue to keep an eye on this situation out there, but uh, keeping an an eye on the roads right now in drive cam is the one and only Alex Gomez. Alex, all right, man. So we were talking a little bit about 4th of July activities the other uh, during our last hit. How are things looking out there right now on the roads? The roadways are awesome right now. Check out the northeast side at 35 southbound at Rudiman Road. And I'm also seeing the same thing with construction. 
I'm not. There's no construction over here on the northeast side. 35 South near Ikea in 1604. It looks like they do have another holiday today, which is good. It's well deserved. They've been working really hard. So if you're coming down from the greater northeast side, all the lanes are open, RJ. Okay, that's good news out there. And if you are about to step outside, maybe, uh, you know, filling up for some gas for the weekend or so, just to keep in mind that uh, San Antonio, you've seen a little bit of a drop in gas prices right now, looking at 304 across the, the San Antonio area. That's down seven cents from just last week. And the state of Texas looking the same, and the national average looking the same there as well, 351 and 310, if you're about to make any sort of road trips over the next couple of days. Patty and Sarah, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio fire crews had their hands full with several fires overnight. Here's a look at one of them. This happened just before 1230 this morning at a home on Ruby Oaks. That's near Henderson Pass, not far from 281. Investigators say a detached garage and two vehicles caught fire. Fortunately, no one was hurt. And Justin mentioned this just a few moments ago, but here is more video of that big grass fire out in Bear County. Last night, our crews went to this grass fire. It happened near Rotama Pass. That's near I-10 and Foster Road. And we are working to get more information about what sparked those flames. We want to get back to that poll that we have going right now. You can see it right there at the bottom of your screen. So this is all about those shark attacks. If you had plans to go to the Texas Coastal Bend this weekend, does it make you think twice about your beach trip? It's making me think twice. <laughs> Here are the results so far. 61% of you say yes. 39% of you say no. We want to hear more from you. Please scan that QR code right there and let us know what you're thinking. Also, I know Justin's been updating us on barrel, and maybe this weekend is not a good weekend for the Texas coast. Of course, he's going to have more on that throughout our show. So this comes after that terrifying shark attack. Four people were injured off South Padre Island yesterday. And officials believe a single shark was behind this rampage. Authorities in South Texas are on high alert for sharks after four swimmers encountered the same shark off South Padre Island. <laughs> Video from a witness shows the shark near the shore, where a man suffered a severe bite to the leg. I turned around, he wasn't there anymore. The victim was pulled to shore by his father-in-law. I started swimming towards him, and then he jumped up out of the water saying, shark, shark, shark. And that's when adrenaline kicked in, I went right, right after him. The shark then bit a second victim and grazed a third. A fourth swimmer was also injured, fending off an attack. Authorities captured this footage of the shark swimming near the area, then flew their helicopter closer to the water, scaring the shark away. It's not a real scene. It was like, how is, this, how is this actually happening right now? All of the victims are expected to recover, but experts say the shark's behavior is consistent with how sharks hunt, looking for food by biting what's in front of them. Uh, once they find out it's not a fish, they let go, but the damage has been done. And experts say this type of shark attack is very rare and is usually a, a case of mistaken identity by a hungry shark. Yeah, like we said, they, they live, live there. there. And be sure to vote in our poll. You can see it right there on the bottom of your screen. We'll keep showing the results throughout the morning. It's 538 and 79 degrees. After the break, a story that's sure to put a smile on your face. We'll introduce you to the Weenie Dog Race Champion. Super cute. Looking forward to that. 79 degrees. Oh my gosh, the humidity is <laughs> really, really thick this morning. Uh, hey, but Justin has our update on the forecast. Will we see rain tomorrow? And what effects are we going to have from that storm barrel? He's going to break it all down for us when we come back. Hey there, welcome back. Well, the crowds came out for the Alamo Beer Company Independence Day Wiener Dog Race. This is cute. Garrett Berger was there and got to meet the winner. Take a look. <laughs> Forget Nathan's, the real hot dogs this 4th of July are racing in the weenie dog races at Alamo Beer. The brewery is celebrating both the holiday and the release of a new beer, Badger Hound. Nothing is more on brand for the 4th of July than a hot dog. The races may not have been highly regulated, but they were highly entertaining. 11 dogs racing in three heats with a fourth heat for the final. The winner of the costume contest earlier in the day, Clyde, or Bat Dog, had to settle for being the best dressed because no one ran like Forrest. <laughs> 
who from our pre-race conversation with his owner sounded like a bit of a ringer. He's one years old. He ever raced before? Yes, sir. He is 11 time champ at the little Woodrow's ones that they have around here in Texas. And then we're going to the Wiener Dog Nationals in California next weekend. They have nationals. They have nationals in California. So, so he oh, will be there. So real competitor. Real competitor. <laughs> Just coming for some fun. His owner won a case of beer and Forrest got some swag, not to mention barking rights. That wiener is a winner. <laughs> The of course he is. Look at him. He is cool. Run, Forrest, run. run we wish Forrest. you the best at nationals. All right, tight right now, 543, 79 degrees. Take a look outside with dr drive cam. Alex Gomez, last time we checked in, he was on the northeast side near my hood off of Riddiman and 35. We'll see where he is and give us any updates on the roads this morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are continuing our coverage on the devastation for, from Hurricane Barrow. The storm is a cat two as it moves towards Yucatan Peninsula. It continues its march across the Caribbean Sea after leaving its mark on Jamaica. The nation is recovering from heavy flooding and damage after Barrow ripped through the island Wednesday. As ABC's Andrea Fuji reports, Barrow is bearing through on major resort areas in Mexico with Texas also in its sight. Overnight, hurricane barrel strengthening back to a Category 3 storm, now taking aim at Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, where resort towns are bracing for a direct hit. <laughs> Boarding up, evacuating coastal communities, while also moving 10,000 sea turtle eggs away from the storm's path in Cancun. The hurricane already blamed for at least nine deaths in the Caribbean, damaging or destroying 95% of homes on two islands in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Barrel weakened to a Category 2 after hammering the Cayman Islands with a powerful storm surge and causing widespread damage across Jamaica. The airport in Montego Bay was able to reopen last night, but people hoping to leave the island found no employees at the ticket counter. Frustrated passengers waiting for days. The Minister of Tourism tells me that all three international airports on this island should be fully operational this morning. Now Texas is preparing, handing out sandbags in Corpus Christi for potential impacts from Barrel as early as Sunday night. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. A lot of people out there getting ready for this, and we should all be getting ready because we just don't know where that's going to turn yet, right? Right. There's still some uncertainty there, and as I've been saying all morning, and this is kind of the theme, I think, of the next couple of days, is a matter of miles can make a big difference on what kind of damage we see uh, along the coast and then how much rainfall we get here. Uh, case in point, this is uh, what the rainfall forecast is right now over the next five days. So we're talking rainfall totals over the next five days. I purposely did not put numbers on here because I think these numbers could vary so much. I think we have to think of this as uh, folks out to the west are going to get much lower totals and then folks off to the east are going to get much higher totals. Uh, if you remember Hurricane Harvey, if you were here during that situation, there was a very hard cutoff line between who got rain and who didn't. And I think that this could be a similar situation. Uh, so just know, and by the way, this line can shift east or west. Uh, but I think there's going to be a pretty significant gradient between uh, rainfall totals. So that's that's what we're watching. Uh, and I know if uh, you're on the lower side of things, it can be disappointing. Uh, but we have to prepare for that. Here's a look at the spaghetti plots. And here's what's kind of changed. If you remember yesterday, a lot of the plots still took it uh, perhaps west of San Antonio. Well, now everything's kind of shifting east. And having it make that curve, which seems like a possibility, uh, and by the way, if it does make this curve a little bit earlier and stays out over the open water for a little bit longer, there's a threat that this could strengthen more. And that would put places like Corpus Christi in sort of a bad situation. So these are all things we have to watch. And again, we're talking a difference of 50 miles here can make all the difference in the world. Here's where Barrel sits right now. It is making landfall as we speak. So you've got Cozumel right here. Uh, this is Tulum. It's making landfall just north of Tulum, and then you got Playa del Carmen, obviously popular vacation spots, but this is crashing into the shore right now as a Category 2 hurricane. Winds at 110 miles per hour. It's going to cross over the Yucatan uh, today and then reemerge into the Gulf of Mexico. Probably a sort of a disorganized mess because it's going to be interacting with land. It's still going to take on some wind shear. 
That being said, we've still got winds of 60 miles per hour as of late tonight into early tomorrow morning. It's going to take some time, but I think it restrengthens because the waters are so warm in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and then you start to get uh, back into hurricane strength here. Now, the Hurricane Center has also adjusted their path because they're seeing what I'm seeing here, where it's maybe a bit of a more quick northerly turn. So now Corpus Christi uh, down to Brownsville within that cone of uncertainty. And then uh, from there, still a lot of questions as to exactly where barrel will track as we get into Tuesday. Either way, I still think we get some tropical moisture around here. We're still going to keep some decent rain chances intact around San Antonio. So let's talk about tomorrow. Before barrel gets here, we're going to get some showers and storms. There's about a 30% chance of rain as a weak frontal battery sinks into the area. The best odds will be in the hill country. So that's tomorrow. Sunday, you'll start to see the impacts across South Texas, maybe not so much here in San Antonio. Uh, but this is one of our computer models, and it agrees with the idea that this thing starts to turn north. And uh, notice that, yes, a lot of the heavy rain would be I-35 and points east as we get into Monday. Still some questions on timing. Again, still some questions on the path that we've got to watch. But rain chances, 50% both Monday and Tuesday with some heavy downpours, at least in spots. Our forecast for today, another quiet one, 90 at noontime. We make it up to 99 with a feels like temperature of 103 when you factor in the humidity. In the extended forecast, we'll go 96 tomorrow, 95 Sunday, and look for cooler temperatures next week, uh, potentially with cloud cover and rain. Is it because of all that storm, whatever's coming in from that storm is going to cool us off? Yeah, I mean, cloud cover, and if, if it does rain most of the day, that, uh, that'll keep temperatures in check, which Yay. would be great. All right, we welcome that. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Yeah, guys, and we'll continue, continue to keep an eye on uh, things, especially maybe some people coming up from the coastal areas, uh, maybe just trying to avoid some of the activity that we may see along the southeast all the way down to the valley area. Let's take a look at our current traffic conditions right now. This is going to be a crash being reported 90 eastbound right there at Leon Creek. Now, it looks like it's off to the side of the road, so uh, if you're headed on 90 eastbound right now, keep this in mind. Uh, not seeing too many delays because of this incident there, but uh, again, this just popped up on on the TxDOT website about maybe five to 10 minutes or so ago. Taking a look here, Loop 410 eastbound right here at West Avenue. Still have a uh, stalled vehicle being reported in this area on the northwest side of town. So uh, still seeing some traffic move through this area. It actually looks like it's right there, right there off to the right hand side there off to the shoulder. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this one as well. Also keeping an eye on the roads right now on the ground is Alex Gomez, our photojournalist extraordinaire. Alex, uh, how are things looking out there? I know uh, we've been texting back and forth about this stall there on the northwest side so go ahead and give us an update about uh, where you're at my man well good morning rj i just passed through that area 410 west uh near west avenue and uh yeah it, it wasn't really impacting the main lane so i think we're all in the clear right there until they get that car out of there but so far so good i kept on going west now i'm at 410 near bandera road and again not much volume so i think we're looking okay so far rj all right, thank you very much, Alex, for checking that out for us as we take a look at our citywide map. And you do see a couple different things popping up right now. There, of course, is our activity there, 90 at Leon Creek. And then, of course, uh, looking at 410, that situation over there on the northwest side. So we will continue to keep you guys updated on this and give you more information as we get it. Patty, Sarah, back to you guys. Thanks, RJ. Time right now, 554, 79 degrees this Friday. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, eight, seven, fireball, eight, daily, four, two, six, six, four, fireball, two. And the cash, five, five, 14, 18, 21, 30, Texas two-step, three, six, 12, 28, and six. Good morning, America. Coming up, we have breaking news this morning and lots of it. Hurricane Barrel right in that landfall area south of Cancun and Cozumel. Texas now in the cone of travel for this storm. Plus, brand new wildfires exploding late in the evening and overnight in the west. And extreme heat is driving this. More than 110 million Americans are in that heat. We will follow it all for you. Also this morning, the pressure growing on President Biden as he gets set to sit down with George Stephanopoulos for his first interview since the debate and what the president said overnight as concerns grow among some Democrats. Also, it's a brand new pickle sandwich. That's right. I said it and it's going viral. We'll show you how to make it. It's right here on GMA. Stay tuned.